Welcome to episode 2 of our Scaffold DIA video tutorial. This is part 1 of a two-part episode on loading data into Scaffold DIA. This portion will give a broad overview of loading data and explain in detail the first workflow. The next video will delve into the second workflow. This tutorial assumes you have already installed and activated Scaffold DIA on your computer. If you have not, please do so. Tutorial 1 contains information regarding installing and activating Scaffold DIA. Scaffold DIA uses a single page workflow with three tabs to load data, as opposed to the wizard found in Scaffold. This streamlines the process. Additionally, files can be organized after the data is loaded in Scaffold DIA, so there is no need to organize files into biosamples and categories during loading. The new file icon can be used to create an experiment and is found on the Welcome dialog displayed when the program is launched. The File drop-down menu or the toolbar. For more information on loading data or to access the in-program help guide, click on the Help Me Choose button scattered throughout the load data workflow. Before we get into the workflow, let's make a distinction between two data types that will be employed in Scaffold DIA. Reference data is composed of DIA data that is used to create a library. Reference data is often searched with very small windows and heavily fractionated to achieve the best possible coverage with little interference. Experimental data is DIA data that is searched using a library. Most experimental data is captured using wider windows and is not as heavily fractionated. These are samples you are trying to analyze in order to gain biological insight. There are three types of files that can be used for searching in Scaffold DIA. The first is a standard FASTA file matching the organism being studied. Next is a BLIB spectral library that can be created in Skyline or as an export from Scaffold. Note BLIBs are derived from matching DDA data. Finally, data can be searched against an ELIB. An ELIB or chromatogram library is a DIA library that is created by and specific to Scaffold DIA. Reference DIA data is searched against a FASTA or existing BLIB to create an ELIB. This file can then be used in additional searches. Scaffold DIA contains two workflows for analyzing files depending on what data you have available. Option 1 simply allows you to search experimental data against an existing library. This library can be a FASTA file, a BLIB file, or an ELIB file. Option 2 allows you to create an ELIB chromatogram library file from reference DIA data and search experimental DIA data against it. Let's begin stepping through the process of loading data when using an existing library. Users who have configured DDA search engines, such as Mascot, should be familiar with the majority of the parameters that need to be set in order to start a search. We begin in the Search tab, where the bulk of the settings live. Note that the yellow triangles scattered throughout the workflow are an indication that the user's attention is required. Once the triangles are cleared, data processing can begin. Select the workflow that matches the type of search you would like to perform. In this video, we will focus on searching experimental data against an existing library. Select the first option. First, we must choose the library we would like to search our data against. The FASTA option here will search your experimental files against a FASTA protein sequence database. The library option will allow you to search against an existing BLIB or ELIB. Note, if you choose to search against a library, you still must provide a protein sequence database in the form of a FASTA file. In this tutorial, we are going to search experimental data against an existing ELIB. Use the file browser to select your library. Next, select a FASTA file for the organism being studied. When searching a Skyline B loop, you have the option to provide an IRT database file as well. Scaffold DIA does not require retention time normalizing peptides, so this file is optional. In this example, we are searching an ELIB file, which means the option to add an IRT DB is disabled. The next group of parameters should be adjusted based on the data collected and include precursor and fragment tolerance, digestion enzyme, and missed cleavages. Set these values appropriately for the data you generated. If you are in doubt, the defaults are a good place to start. The library fragment tolerance is the fragment tolerance that was set during the creation of the library. Next, any modifications you would like to be included in the search should be added. By default, carbaminomethylation of C is included as a fixed mod. To add a mod, click on the Add button. This will bring up a list of common modifications to choose from. Select a mod and click Add Selected Modification. If the mod is fixed, check the Fixed box. Users can also create a modification that is not listed using the Create button. This will bring up a dialog where the modification can be defined. 
Below the modifications table, you will see a box for the peptide level FDR threshold with the default set to 1%. Setting this parameter to the desired FDR value is very important as this threshold cannot be changed once the data is loaded. The final parameter, and one that might be unfamiliar to people, is the data acquisition type parameter. This tells the program whether your DIA windows were non-overlapping, overlapping with small margins, or staggered with significant overlap. Make sure to set this appropriately based on your instrument settings. Finally, we can select our raw experimental DIA files using the Add button on the right hand side. Once this is done, the yellow triangle should be cleared from the search tab. The first perimeter on the Analysis tab sets the shared evidence threshold required to cluster proteins. Next, you can change the target protein FDR and the minimum number of peptides required for identification. Unlike the peptide level FDR threshold, these can be changed in the samples view after data is loaded. Before data can be loaded for the first time, a processing directory must be selected and the behavior must be defined. The processing directory stores intermediate files created by DIA during the search. Choose a location where you have a lot of disk space available. Options for how files are managed include create a subfolder in the set processing directory and delete intermediate files once processing is completed, create a subfolder in the set processing directory and retain intermediate files after processing is completed, or save files directly to the processing directory without creating a subfolder. Lastly, in the advanced tab, you can configure the minimum and maximum number of quantified ions for a peptide. Quantification is done by fragment ion intensities in Scapel DIA. Setting the minimum allows you to require multiple fragments to avoid quantifying on just one or two. Setting the maximum saves time by not quantifying extraneous ions. Once all parameters have been defined, there should be no yellow triangles in the workflow dialog. You can now click load data to start processing data.